Welcome into the fame at the Rustic in Dallas. I'm your host, Tony Banks, joined by my co-host, defensive end George Selby, and my lovely correspondent, Lindsey Cash. We're here celebrating a big win over the Saints at the VIP buffet table with some of our sponsors. George, tell us who's going to be on the show today. I got my boy Nick Head in here with us to see what the fame is all about. Hey, man, don't eat all my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you see them getting their grub on, and Lindsay's going to give us our Beer 101 segment. That's right, Tony. Hands off, not your segment. I would love to be more hands-on with that segment. The Fame starts now. The Fame. More than just the game. Tony, Lindsay, George, and Dwayne. Big names. Fun and games. Never the same. Welcome to The Fame. Welcome everyone to the Rustic. Thanks for coming out today for the show, The Fame. Big win this past week. Defense played lights out. Let's welcome George Selby. Yeah. So you just finished up your first quarter of the season. You got 12 more left. You're basically with an a, a, a grade on the first quarter, but now the real game starts, right? Now you just held one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL to under 60 plays and only 17 points. How'd you do it? Um, we just went out there and played assignment football. You know, we're not there to play fundamentals, you know, assignment, key, technique, and all that stuff. So we just lined up and played ball. And, we, you know, they whooped us pretty bad last year. Um, so with that, we had a little chip on our shoulder about that. So we went out there and played. I'll tell you what, you got that whooping back, right? I mean, they couldn't run it. Couldn't throw it when they did complete it. Mm -hmm. You guys are making them cough it up. Yeah. Big win, love watching it. Now, as a defensive player, how much fun is it to watch the offense really grinding it out with that big offensive line and one of the most dynamic backs in the NFL right now, DeMarco Murray? Um, with that, you know, we go against those guys every day. Pie drill, we're hitting those guys. So they're one of the best offensive line in the league, in my opinion. So we're going against the best in the league every day. So that's going to make us better. And plus, with the offense doing what they're doing in the field, running the ball, throwing the ball, holding the ball, that keeps us fresh as a um, defense. So when we go out there, we go out there fresh and ready to hit and get off the field again yeah, so they can go, go do their thing. Now, to, to be, to keep a Saints offense under 60 plays, that means you had to get turnovers and had to be getting off the field on third down, right? Now, what's your favorite part of a uh, uh, defensive series? Is it first, second, third down? Um, for me, it's going to have to be third down. Yeah. You know, it's, it's big. You get the crowd pumped up, it's third yeah, down. Yeah. So you're just going out there and just, uh, it's, it's no feeling like just raising your hand and thousands of people just start screaming for no yeah. reason. So <laughs> it, it's cool. And that's how you get that money on third down, right? Yeah, you get that, to that quarterback, yeah, you get exactly. that money, like Johnny say, right? Now, speaking of money, we got another one of your teammates in the house today, Nick Hayden. Can we get a round of applause Golden for Mr. Power. Nick Hayden? Another integral part of that defense. There he is. Hi, Nicholas. Clay Matthews, I mean Nick Hayden. <laughs> Cowboy Nation. <laughs> yeah. Now, Nick, another big part of the defense. Again, congrats on the great effort, buddy. Now, tell me a little bit about the deep rotation you guys ha on, have on that defensive line that keeps you guys fresh, even though you only had to play 25 minutes of football this past Sunday. Yeah, it's great. Um, can't complain. Body's feeling better each and each week. So uh, the rotation's been great for us. Uh, it brings, you know, four new guys on, you know, each series, which helps me a lot and helps, <laughs> I know helps George a lot. So, yes. uh so it's been it's been great so far as long as we keep it going and just have enough enough bodies in there to keep rotating and then uh, just not losing a step. I hear you. I hear you. Now Wisconsin had a big win this weekend, right? Tough no. one. Tough oh, one. Oh yeah. Who was that against? I don't remember who that was against. South Florida. Oh wait, there's somebody hey, I know that went to we South Florida. We played hard, man. We played hard. <laughs> so you had a moral victory? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I, and I, uh, he knew he was gonna get beat. Let's just say that. <laughs> I tell you what, they didn't do much with that running game. <laughs> Now, let me ask both of you guys. Nick, you first. Now, as you're watching football Monday, Thursday, any kind of day, you're not working, not playing, who's one of your favorite defensive players that you like to watch? Right now, uh, it's hard to say. I like watching the Dallas Cowboys right now, defense ah, play. There it is. I mean, you. They're, they're killing it out there right now and <laughs> only getting better. So, uh, I agree. That's who I like watching. It's fun to turn that film on on every Tuesday and watch watch the Dallas Cowboys fly around, their defense fly around, create turnovers. So uh, I'm excited about the possibilities where that's going to go. 
And that nose guard they got, and Nick Hayden, oh my God, she's just flying around. <laughs> you know, he made a tackle, he came out of nowhere out of stack and just, he blew it up, man. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. That's like a, that's, you look, that. look at these teammates up here loving on each other, huh? You guys don't get to Bro see man. that on USA Today <laughs> and ESPN, right? These are true teammates right here supporting each other. So, George, same question for you. Other than Nick Hayden, who's your favorite defensive player to watch in the sure. NFL? Um, I'm gonna have to go back old school. I'm gonna have to go back to Tracy Armstrong. Ooh. man. he was an old guy, and he went out there and just, just lit it up, like 16. You sacks. like old guys, huh? Old guys, you like old guys. Yeah. Level rush. Level <laughs> rush. That's all you got to most about that. Well, Nick, you being from Wisconsin, we're gonna have you back a little later for a segment we like to say, like to call "Do You Know Your Cheese?" And you being a Wisconsin guy, you better know your cheese. We're gonna kick it over there to Lindsey Cash. She's gonna let us know what's going on. What's up? Thanks, Tony. Hey, I'm hanging out at the Ben E. Keys table. Are we having fun? <laughs> yes, of course. And this right here, this guy, we're about to go one-on-one -on -one for Beer 101. That's right after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more of the fame. Bob Lavelle here for Home Marketing Services. My ex-wife, born and bred right here in Dallas, has taught me a lot about Texas. She's always saying, bless your heart when bad things happen to people. It took me about 12 years to figure it out. Smashed my thumb hammering a nail one day, and there she was. Bless your heart. That's when I realized what it really meant is you dumb <laughs> Which brings me to my point. Still renting, making the landlord richer, but would rather own your own home and still haven't called HMS. Well, bless your heart. The Fame is sponsored by the Webster Law Firm, your personal injury legal advisors. You are here. Whatever you say, a real town built by Bud Light is somewhere in this area here. Why the secrecy? Because if we divulge the exact whereabouts, this amazing town will be overrun by a wave of humanity demanding to do this, 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 a whole lot of this, and tons of this for three straight days. We can't have that yet. You're probably hearing about Bud Light's Whatever USA right now from people here, 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 and... Oh, that's a little scary. Find out what's happening at upforwhatever.com. Your Beer 101 moment brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. And welcome back to the fame, everyone. Beautiful night here in Dallas, hanging out at the Rustic. I'm Lindsay Cash, here with Sean Sullivan. It's time for our Beer 101 segment presented by Vinny Keys Beverages. And Sean has actually just been promoted to area sales manager, am I right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Due to the fame of the show, uh, they have moved me up in the company. Awesome. Congratulations. Now, you've got some big shoes to fill. Yes, Teach me something. What is our beverage tonight for the segment? Well, tonight we picked, um, everybody knows how big local breweries are right now, and people support local so we have one out of grapevine called grapevine brewing uh this is their traditional english brown ale called sir williams i love it so what are we pairing it with tonight this looks delicious by the way awesome um i did not cook it myself so i can't <laughs> say anything about that but um we're actually pairing it with a burger it's very simple uh it's a great lightly malted beer it goes great with the caramelization of the meat and uh the swiss cheese on there goes very well with the hops all right give our viewers a little pour little demonstration of this beer so we got. just like so doing, pouring, doing so pouring. good you always pour down the side of the glass through the middle did not know that and then just drop it okay so it's pretty it. dark yeah so it's not as dark as traditional like northern english brown ales but um, the great thing about grapevine brewing is they produce all very sessionable beers, so nothing too high in alcohol, very sessionable, meaning you can drink more than one. Awesome. Sean, I feel so educated. Thank you so this much. Is what I do. <laughs> all right, we've got much more coming up on the fame. Don't go anywhere. We're going to enjoy this during the break. We'll see you in a few. Your Beer 101 moment was brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. You are here. Whatever you say, a real town built by Bud Light is somewhere in this area here. Why the secrecy? Because if we divulge the exact whereabouts, this amazing town will be overrun by a wave of humanity demanding to do this, 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 a whole lot of this, and tons of this for three straight days. We can't have that yet. You're probably hearing about Bud Light's Whatever USA right now from people here, 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 and, oh, that's a little scary. Find out what's happening at upforwhatever.com.
back to the fame, everyone. I'm Lindsay Cash, hanging out at the HMS table with Mr. Bob Lavelle himself, having a great time. But now you've seen Nick Hayden, you've seen George Selby. I'm going to send it back up to Tony for another special guest from the Cowboys defense. Tony? Let's bring on Dallas Cowboys safety Barry Church, and let's talk to him about that Saints win. <laughs> There he is. Yeah. Look at him. He got his extra medium shirt on. I like it. I like it. <laughs> now, Barry, you being in the secondary, had to deal with Colson and Stills and, you know, uh, Cooks. Everybody talking about Brandon Cooks and all that speed. Now, how did the team defense play a part in you guys being able to shut down that passing game of the Saints? Uh, well, the, the first key was uh, communication was on point between everybody, defensive linemen, the linebackers, and then the secondary. And once we uh, got the play call communicated through everybody, I mean, it was just as simple as playing our keys and reading our keys. And uh, we were able to do that and execute the plan to the fullest. I know George is always on here talking about alignment, assignment. And, you know, I don't care what position you play as a quarterback, safety, whatever it is, once you know how to align, and you know your assignment, your eyes are in the right place, everything else slows down for you a little bit, right? Is that what you guys are doing right now? You feel like the game is slowing down? Oh, I definitely feel like the game is slowing down, uh, especially as my fifth year going into the league. So I've, I've seen a lot of the co uh, concepts offenses yeah. like to run. So uh, once I get, like you said, the alignment and assignment down, I just got to read my keys and uh, ready to get going. Now, I, I joked about your medium shirt. You probably don't eat a lot of fried foods like George and I. But, but we got Carissa Schuler in the house. We're going to give it up for Carissa Schuler, the Public Relations Director of the Texas State Fair. And there she is, lovely as ever. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. I'm Thanks. doing well. Good. Congrats so again you, on the game. Thank you. Thank so what do you have for us today? You got some cuisine, some Texas State Fair cuisine. We're all anxious. We love the fried stuff. I hope you brought some of that. Yes, we did. We brought some tasty treats for y'all. We have our Big Tech's Choice Award winners from this year. So our best tasting is going to be the fried Gulf Shrimp Boil. Y'all ready to try that? Ooh, like so, it. And the like previous it. one is the fried meatloaf. He's going to bring that as well. Ooh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Great. Right? I think if we want to bring Clint up, is he ready? Give me some fried Yeah. The what State Fair of Texas is underway right now. I can't believe I was able to escape to come over here. But it's a nice little <laughs> well, thank break. thank you for escaping. Of course. Happy to. Here's our food. Wonderful. Of the devil. Good. Now look at this hairdo. Let's look see. at that. Nice. If you need some of that, George. We have. Yeah, I'll put some of that first, on top of my mohawk. I'll There's the fried meatloaf. Fried meatloaf. Now what do we have? Some sauces here? Yes. We Is have a gravy. Or gravy. That's or gravy. Right gravy. That's can't right. Can't go wrong there. All right, fellas. You want to have the other one? Yeah. I know proper etiquette, so I'm going to taste it before you I You guys are such oh, loving nice, teammates. Nice. They're probably going to split the meatloaf because they're such great teammates. And what was the other sauce, Clint? That's our German spicy ketchup glaze. Nice. Mm. A little bit of ketchup, a little bit of brown sugar, a little spicy Meat German Meatloaf mustard. ketchup. Common. You like that? Yeah, I like it. When was that a finalist? Last year. Last year? Oh. Let's try the fried Gulf shrimp boil next. Where I put my meatloaf? Well, you got to finish it real quick. No. <laughs> you can set it in there, and I'll take it. Mm. And there's a Rumalot sauce Ooh, that this yeah. comes with. This one best tasting this year at the Big Tech's Choice Awards. Mm, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> you want to try the fried Gulf shrimp boil? You want to put... Oh, nice. Yeah, Rumalot sauce? Oh, very good. You want the other half, or you want one all your own? <laughs> Great. This is good. Perfect. All right, guys. So what do you think? Really tasty. I'm a fan of that Texas crab boy especially. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And the meatloaf, I wish I would have had it with the ketchup. The ketchup? Yeah. It brought back some memories. We got some more backstage for you. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but we got a show to do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, All right. Everybody, please get Thanks, out to Clint. the Texas State Fair. We're going to have some tickets we're going to be giving out a little later. That's right. Good. We have our next one that'll come up, and we have Justin Martinez, and he's bringing out a few treats. One was a finalist this year, which was the Fried Sweet Texas. It has pecan pie, peach cobbler, and buttermilk pie inside. I spoke too soon. I forgot dessert. This one might be a little harder to eat with your hands. Mm. Give me the ice cream. <laughs> so 
like so while we still have Clint out here, Clint, how did you come pie? up with the fried gulf shrimp boil this year? Well, my family and I were on a road trip through uh, Louisiana and New Orleans, and then we came back across the Gulf Coast, and we were trying some Creole and Cajun cuisine, and we started talking about it on the way home, and just the four of us, my wife and two beautiful children, just sort of spitballed it until we had a good idea. So. Nice. Well, good. And then, what's up with you and Justin's hair tonight? We have another operation new this year at the fair called Fair Hair, where mm. we do crazy hair colors and glitter and tiaras and little. Can you do anything with mine? Uh, we could do you goatee. Help me out. <laughs> we the do goatees. And <laughs> you can do the goatee. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Clint. I love this All buttery right, guys, crust on this guy so here. I love this buttery crust. I'm, mm, I just don't have enough hands. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, the pie is unbelievable. Good. Well, we're going to give you something to drink that down with, and that's the original State Fair Brew Funnel Cake Ale. This is the most creative winner of the Big Tech's Choice Awards this year. Now you're talking. I'll, I'll do this for the show. I don't, I don't normally, but I'll do it for the show. There's a nice little powdered sugar thank rim you. on it. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much. If you'll stay for a second, I want to ask you a question. Ah, refreshing. Refreshing. Cheers. Tasty. Ziggy, zaggy, ziggy. Cheers to the Cowboys, huh? Yes, sir. Raise your cup to the Cowboys. Cheers. So how'd you come up with this tasty treat, Justin? Well, as you're aware, uh, craft beers is very popular, especially at this place. So I said, why not have an exclusive beer strictly for the state fair? And so that's how we came up with it last year. And why not funnel cake? So we hit it off with a powdered sugar rim and a little bit of doughiness and sweetness in the, uh, the beer. Awesome. Well, it's pretty tasty. What do y'all think? Love it. Refreshing. Excellent. It, and gone. It's gone. Good. Good. Well, come out to the State Fair. We're open right now. <laughs> now we're going to kick it to Lindsay, who has some athletic-looking people. I think I might know a couple. Lindsay, what you have for us? What's up? Thanks, Tony. Yes, I am sitting here next to Wendell Davis, head coach of the Texas Revolution. And we're going to talk to him and his coaching staff right after the break. But I want to let you know how you can hang out with us on Monday nights at 7 p.m. here at The Rustic. Just log on to thefametv.com, get your tickets, and you get here and get free food from The Rustic, free beer provided by Bud Light. It's a great time. Come join us. We'll see you in a few after the break. Cash joined by the coaching staff of the Texas Revolution, head coach Wendell Davis here. How you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? Oh, so good. I want you to tell our viewers about your coaching staff you have here with you tonight. I got the big time Larry Sanders, yeah. running back and fullback coach, Rod Winchester, the kicking coach, John, special team coach, and I got my good friend Mitch, which is the media guy. Wonderful. So uh, tryouts are coming up in one week this coming Saturday. Is this open to the public? Are you telling people right now that they can come try out for some indoor football? Yes, I'm definitely telling them to come out. If you still got dreams of playing, come out and see us October the 4th at 1 o'clock at D1 workout facility. So uh, question for you guys right here. What can fans expect when they're coming into the games to check out the Texas Revolution? Anybody. A win, hard hits. High flying football. And I hear you can get pretty close to the action too, right? Yeah, you're about eight inches away when you're on the front row. So you can actually literally touch your player. You can reach out and block a pass, although it's not encouraged. You can do it and you can't get away with it. Um, you know, players fly over the wall. They'll uh, knock your beer out of your hand, you know, crush your hot dog, even uh, bruise a kid or two. 
And, uh, you know, those kids go to school and they're unsung heroes the next week, you know? So it's kind of it's kind of cool. What I'm hoping to see is I'm hoping to see fans that come out to watch people who have a love for the game. We're not necessarily making the big-time paychecks out there. We're just out because we love the game of football. We want to produce something that our fans can be proud of, and we are dead set on getting it done. And what I love is that a lot of this staff is a former NFL player. Kind of tell me a little bit, what is the scouting process like? How do you find these guys, and do you help them kind of make their way into the NFL? I look everywhere. I go back for a couple years for all the college around in Dallas. I also do a lot of things with the Cowboys. Uh, guys getting cut, released from camp. Guys getting released from I IFL teams, AFL teams. Are you out there? We're going to try to find you. Now, I got to turn this to Larry here real quick. I think uh, Tony, I mean, we might catch Tony at tryouts. You never know. But, Larry, <laughs> you and Tony go way back. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. I told Tony uh, we needed to start out with him as our quarterback, to be honest with you. <laughs> he said he could give us a heck of a game, but that, that's about it. <laughs> no, Tony's uh, first game was against um, my team, the teams that I was playing for at the time, and I had a, a decent game. And every time I see him, he always reminds me of um, how well I did that game. And, but I have great respect for him as a, uh, as a player and even after, you know, as a man. All right, last time, opening night. Tell the fans when they can head out to catch the first game. February the 20th, 7 o'clock. I will be there. All right, Tony, we'll send it back to you. Hey, thank you, Lindsay. LC, I remember my first start, man. You spoiled my first start. I was supposed to win my first start. You had like 25 catches in overtime alone to spoil it for me. But now we're going to go into a franchise that I like to call That's Just Rude. We're going we're gonna to ask these guys about a, a kind of a current topic in today's uh, kind of TMZ-type world, whether sports-related or celebrity-related. Um, and I want to talk about, now I don't know how many of y'all know Floyd Mayweather Jr., you boxing fans out there, Floyd Mayweather Jr., right? So he has a beef with 50 Cent that's been going on for a while. 50 been talking about uh, Floyd Mayweather can't read. I mean, it's been getting real ugly, right? So I'm from the old school. I think my beef is my son's beef. My son's beef is my beef. But 50 Cent's son is taking pictures with Floyd Mayweather, his sworn enemy. Now, to me, that's just rude, gentlemen. What do you guys think? George, you first. Um, I would have to say that's just rude. You know, I got a son. <laughs> my son would go to take a picture with my enemy. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I hear I'm you. A, yeah, so, yeah, that's rude. Barry, what you think, man? Uh, I, I have to feel with uh, George on that one. That's just that's very rude. I mean, <laughs> just, I mean, it's your, it's your father. So, above anybody, you're supposed to have his back. And uh, he's supposed to have yours. And for you to just go do some some shicey stuff like that, I mean, that's that's pretty rude. Yeah, 50 Cent son Marquise, his value has been dropping. He might be down to a nickel right about now. <laughs> <laughs> now let's bring Mr. Nick Hayden back, because we told you we're going to get him to taste some cheeses to see if he knows it's his cheeses from Wisconsin. He better. Let's bring Nick back. <laughs> hey, back again. The pressure's on, Nick. We about to clog you up right now with about eight gallons of cheese. Oh, man, there we go. But you off tomorrow, right? So you're good. You're good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and the blindfold. Do you do, see Nick? Do we have a bandana? Big I can't see, for you, but it's going to be very embarrassing if I don't know my <laughs> cheeses. <laughs> now, how do you feel, Nick? Do you feel confident in your uh, palate as far as the formage goes? Yeah, I said formage. Uh, a little bit. Um, when I come in from practice, I can usually sniff out what we're going to have for lunch, so <laughs> I feel pretty confident right now. Here we go first. Swiss. Oh, that, my friend, is white cheddar. So you had the right color. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, nah. we don't have white cheddar in Wisconsin. <laughs> Some water, bro. The drum Some roll. Wine. Got I a drum roll. Take bigger bites. You know it. You can do it. It's yellow. I feel like too many cheeses are in my mouth right now, but I'm going to go with uh, cheddar. Yes, that is sharp yes. cheddar. There we go. Yes. Good job. Good job. Give him a, giving him a hint there, Mr. Selvi. 
I love how he's only taking a bite of half the cheese with his pinky out, though. That's a defensive line. <laughs> defensive line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one and dime. This one's white. I couldn't hear you, huh? <laughs> it's white. Looks like. Swiss. What's the color? What's the color? White. It's white. What are you talking? It's white. Yes. Okay, I can hear you. And it's not Swiss. Provolone. Oh, provolone. That is absolutely incorrect. Ah, it is Gouda. Gouda. Ah. You were so close. It's nah, too expensive. Know. Sorry. All right. Cheese number four. If you don't get that one, you're off the show, man. We're never going to invite you back. If you don't get this one right here. Because this is, come on. I mean, there's only one cheese taste like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love dirty martinis. So this is not blue cheese olives. Yeah, blue cheese. So you got blue cheese. Know, He's yeah, one for four. Yeah, okay, right. He's batting one for 250. Four. He's like a utility infielder. Now, we got one more with a little crostini for you, huh? a little texture. You got this one. Why does it feel so weird? Oh, <laughs> it's not nah. cheese. It can't but, be bro, cheese. I ate it, man. It's Barry's finger. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got that. We're just eating it's it earlier. creamy. It's white. It's on like bread, it. bro. I don't like it. You just ate it earlier. We didn't ask if you liked it. We asked right. you what it is. I know. I have no idea. Hey, you got like two seconds. Three. Yes. Yes. Two. It comes from my animal. One. Uh, go cheese. Ah. Nice. Go cheese. He's two for five, ah. batting four hundred. He's a Hall of Famer now. Wait, why is goat cheese hard? In baseball. Well, yeah, the, bread. the bread is hard, man. <laughs> Barry's right, finger is you. hard. That's what kind of made me. Well, I don't know if you're going to keep your Wisconsin uh, cheese pass. You have highly disappointed dairy farmers Green all boat. across the country. It's all good. I did. You're supposed to rep Wisconsin. That didn't happen. I want to thank George Selvey, Barry, Barry Church, Nick Hayden. We're going to be celebrating another win next week versus the Texans. Thank you to all our sponsors. Please watch us Saturday, TXA 21 at 8.30 a.m. And we will see you again at the Fame. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. <laughs>